I once let pumpkins sail out out on my balcony for a while because I was just too lazy to take them down the three flights of stairs of my apartment. No good. It literally smelled like a baby's diaper. No good. Yeah. It was it disgusting. Really Welcome back to the show. This is Successfully Unsigned. I'm one of your co-hosts, Dale Shack, and I'm so happy to be here with you on what will be our season three finale. We've had a great time this season with all of the discussions and with all of the interviews with artists that we brought on the show. And we hope that you've enjoyed it and learned as much as we have along the way. If this is your first time listening, now is a great chance to go back and listen to all of our other episodes that you can find on our YouTube channel, Successfully unsigned on any streaming platform at successfully unsigned and online at su-podcast.com we'd be thrilled to have you join us in our discussions as tonight marks right at the beginning of the third year of our show we take it back to where we started with another halloween episode of course only two of the three of us dressed up but that's not to be unexpected given your three co-hosts in fact i'm kind of surprised that i even dressed up for this even though i love halloween i'm horrible at putting together costumes but beyond the typical halloween discussion we also get to hear firsthand from Patrick for the first time his experience getting off of his very first tour, which he went on with Dawn and LOL It's Leah. If you want to know more about LOL It's Leah, you can find her interview on our show, Successfully Unsigned. Whereas one of our most recent episodes was a reprise with Quentin Kufal as he discusses leading up to your first tour, what to expect. This is Patrick's recapping on the back end of what it was like for his first tour. Great bookends discussing this topic. If you find this discussion helpful, make sure to rate us five stars on your favorite streaming platform hit that like hit that subscribe and share this conversation with your friends so that you can have constructive dialogue that will help everybody to grow as always you can find us on social media at successfully underscore unsigned everywhere except for tiktok where we are unsigned podcast thank you once again for an amazing three seasons and enjoy this season finale last of this season hey hey we in the shack Hi. Mm. We on track, living our life. Oh, and Pat is back. Hey, <laughs> from the tour. Or as Dale would say, tour. Tour. Get it right, so, man. I told tour. him this. Did you hear the last episode? I, I heard part of it. Yeah, we, I haven't listened like, to all of it yet, but I did hear that part. Yeah. I just saw my name and I was like, oh, let me watch this part. <laughs> <laughs> and then I skipped the rest. Just Welcome kidding. back, Pat. I need to watch the rest of it, though. Welcome back. Thank you. It feels good to be back. I haven't seen you in forever. It's been like, at least a month. Yeah. Um, how was your trip first? Oh, it was it was um it was interesting for sure. My girlfriend almost passed out on top of a mountain. Oh. And almost well. and almost you know, had a little blackout, but it's okay because we got her off off the mountain quick enough. Pikes Peak? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We were up there and she's getting a little sick. <laughs> Oh, she's scared and of heights, or is she just she's not scared of heights. She just wasn't ready for that altitude. Oh, gotcha, and gotcha. like it, it'll sneak up on it's you. It's a pretty rapid change. It is. Yeah. Um, Dalton, our dear friend, had some issues as well, and it just got really pale. And of course, you know, I was up there like, let's take pictures. Let's you know, let's walk around. And they were just like, yeah, I think I'm gonna pass out. I'm like, well, all right, let's go. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it was good just to get away for the weekend. Um, Colorado is beautiful. If you haven't been in the fall, it's absolutely gorgeous um, over there. But yeah, what about you? Um, I had the time of my life, and we'll we'll talk more about it. But yeah. um, Dale, you've been here, so yeah, I haven't. That's I haven't, about it. I mean, I went to Cincinnati for a day. But that was just working. But yeah, so. just working. Mm. So I will be down in Palm Beach. Cincinnati Florida. Cincinnati does have nice. an amazing toy store, though, that I love. I did did not go. So. Sorry. Mm. But if you can't tell, we are in costume. Well, David, was is your costume just David with a haircut uh, and sunglasses? It's white boy from Tennessee is my costume <laughs> tonight. Ah, um, okay. classic. Yeah, I've, I've don't have costumes. I don't usually wear costumes. So here we are. But uh, if you can tell, it's our Halloween episode, which means it's the end of our season, which is funny because our very... F- oh, wrong one. <laughs> I've been away for a while. I'm sorry. Continue. Uh, our first episode was a Halloween episode. So we are celebrating two years of our podcast today. So thank you guys oh, so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, two years of our... Oh, two wow. years of our podcast being out. We, yes. I think yes. we already did a whole like two years of like, hey, two years since we recorded. Right. But it's been two years since our uh, show has been out and about. 
And we thank you guys for that. Yeah. Uh, we had a very crazy. short first season, and we had a very long third season. We did. There's very what, long 32, third season. 32, 33 episodes here in season three. So if you love our podcast, if you love Successfully Unsigned, and this is your first episode, or this is your third episode, you've got a lot of extra content there that you can go back and listen to and hear some great interviews yes. this season. Yes. With some amazing interviews. We had some great discussions here on Successfully Unsigned. I like, I'm... This has been a good season. It's been a. It's been a. It's been a lot, but it's been, it's been really good. It's been yeah. really good. Yeah, I. I mean, so we're gonna be gone for a little bit, uh, as usual. We typically take most of like we take the holidays off pretty much, and usually January too. So you have plenty of backlog to listen to, um, to catch up on. If you're not caught up, uh, if you are caught up, then go listen to some really old episodes and just <laughs> restart the process. And also, if you have topics that you want to see us tackle in this next season, or artists you want to see interviewed here on the podcast, let us know. We are open mm-hmm. to those suggestions and would love to hear the feedback from you, from the listeners, from our favorite people on this planet, those that listen to our podcast. That being said, for our next season, we will be making quite a few changes. Um, just uh, kind of quality over quantity and everything like that. So just be on the lookout for that. We'll talk more about it whenever the season approaches. Uh, but they're all going to be good changes, and we're really excited about them. We had a really good meeting recently and uh, just talked about what we want for the podcast and uh, some extra things that we want to provide for y'all, uh, but providing a little more quality content versus what we've been giving you. Uh, however, we have seen a lot of growth in the past few years as far yeah. as... Um, our quality production. I mean, these lights alone, I feel like, did wonders for our, <laughs> yeah. like, reels and everything. The lights, and, two cameras. Yeah, two cameras. Two good cameras. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> we've come We've come a long way. Uh, we also just hit a thousand followers on Instagram, which is yeah, really fun. That's awesome. Uh, so, still trying to, you know, go follow us on Instagram, of course. But also, go please subscribe to us on YouTube, Successfully yeah. Unsigned. Uh, we've been... A little over a thousand for a little bit now, so we would love to get to two thousand soon. And uh, su dash podcast dot com un- unsigned pod unsigned podcast on TikTok and all the things. So thank you guys for two years. But before we wrap it up, uh, actually we just started, so I guess we're not wrapping it up anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we should do a show and yell and our costumes. So who wants to start? I don't have a costume, so you guys can start. Okay. Dale, I think we all okay. like the audience is wondering what is going <laughs> on. I can hear this man's jacket. Let's just go. All right. I'm one of two things. You decide. Either I'm a biker or I'm prison Mike from the office. So take your pick. I think prison Mike. I think he wears like his office yeah. outfit in just the bandana. So uh, I don't well, think you're prison Mike. <laughs> um, maybe I'm prison Mike with a leather jacket and a, a sick medallion. I mean, uh, it could be. I love the improv uh, approach you're going I with here. Be. Like you decide what I you am. decide. Yeah. Well, you, you do you remember the the epic rap battles of history? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, yeah. those are you amazing. Decide. Yeah. yeah, that's a little different. But yeah, it is a little different. <laughs> those are great. But, you know, uh, you decide. You know. Um, as always, I, I I do enjoy Halloween. I love Halloween, but I am not great at spending time getting costumes ready. Um, very, very poor at getting costumes ready. And so today, driving back to my house uh, from from building a fence, I was like, what can I do that um, would be a costume? But what would work? And I had this bandana on my head already because uh it works great on a job site to keep your hair out of your face and so i was like you know what i can work with that Mm. i can leave it on and do something with that so here we are a couple hours later with the bandana with the leather jacket from goodwill with the medallion from my friend brad joe with the sunglasses from i don't know where um Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It was from Not Dirt Cheap. What's the other place we went to a while back? Uh, It's a place you really like, like not Ollie's, but actually it might have been Ollie's. You've had those glasses for a while. I'm pretty sure you wore those on the first episode. No, 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 no. These are different pair. I just got these. I just got these pair because my other pair were too scratched to see out of. They're in my truck right now. Hey, what's your item? My item. (laughs) (laughs) This costume just keeps going on. 
It's a new guitar! Actually sounded really good with that. Almost. I just set off yeah. my Siri. I don't know how. Nice. Huh. So this guitar isn't just a regular old, you know, acoustic guitar. This guitar is a special guitar, to me at least. Uh, here a few years ago, I did a thesis project um, all about blues, Delta blues specifically, and indigenous music, um, the influence of indigenous music on Delta blues. And well, uh, and I've talked about it on some previous episodes and things like that, so it's not totally new. You can go back and listen to some of those other episodes and hear more of the discussion about it. However, when I was researching uh, that topic, there was a, a particular guitar brand and uh, guitar model that most of those old blues cats all played. Pretty much exclusively, they played Stella parlor size guitars. Now, this is a Stella, um, probably out of the 60s, so a little after um, when like Delta Blues was like in its heyday and prime in the, in the 20s and 30s. Uh, but this is still a Stella parlor guitar. They sold back in the day in Sears catalogs from anywhere from like $8 to like $25. Mm. They were super cheap. They were billed as like beginner's guitars, but they sound just amazing, um, especially when treated well. And I happened to find this one at a garage sale uh, for a good price. I'd seen Stella like full-size guitars before, but I didn't really want a full-sized one. I wanted a parlor size because that's what they that's just really what they played out of yeah and uh man yeah I, I i just i got lucky i was talking to the guy who was running the garage sale and he asked me what i was what i do and i, and I told him i I'm, I'm in the music industry and uh he's like hey i got some guitars you might be interested and i'm thinking i really don't want to buy a guitar like i don't need another guitar but then he brought this out and i was like oh Oh, you don't know what you got, at least <laughs> for like my sentimental value right <laughs> they're not like crazy expensive guitars uh, mm -hmm. even though they went out of production in 1970, that was the last year of production. So at a minimum, it's what, 54 years old it's at really a cool. minimum, uh, probably older than that. Again, I think, I think this one is a sixties model from what I can tell from the serial numbers, but uh, their serial number dating is, they weren't super consistent. It seems like from the research I can find online, but yeah. anyway, um, picked it up and, uh, sounds really great. I'm surprised at how well the intonation holds on this thing. And already started writing some stuff with it because being like, you know, at, David, you know, as a musician, anytime you pick up a brand new instrument, you just hear things differently. Yeah. You play things differently. Things you never would have played before start just magically showing up in your fingers, right? But that aspect is amplified even more so because this is a parlor size. It's smaller. And so quite literally, my fingers can hit things I normally can't. It works for his baby little hands. It does. Also, why does that guitar match your outfit? Like, can you, every <laughs> time you write a song, can you please wear that outfit? I will. With that guitar? Absolutely. Like, what's your first song called, writing that? Or my with that guitar? My first song, uh, writing this one, uh, I'm still kind of workshopping the name a little bit. Country um, Train, Take Me no, <laughs> to Maine. I don't no, know. Country no. Train, Take Me to Maine. No. It's, it's not really, I wouldn't call it a country song. Um, it's western it's so western, it's country yeah. adjacent yeah that one's not western that one's not western the one i wrote with this one now i've done some recording with it and i've done some western style stuff because it sounds this guitar records surprisingly well it's an itty bitty you know guitar but it has recorded really really well and i've recorded uh just four demos so far that i'm going to build off of and do arrangements for um but yeah it records beautifully mm. just beautifully love it yeah, so See? that's my item. A guitar! Because I don't think I shouted it earlier. Or yelled it. I don't remember. I don't know. Thank you, dude. Stella Parlor guitar. Yeet. Can I hold it? While, while he explains. Okay. Guess that nothing lasts forever. <laughs> I wasn't sure when to. <laughs> so this is my... Exclusive, lol, it's Leah. Um, excuse me, sir, you're in my camera. Oh. Um, this is my exclusive, lol, it's Leah first print vinyl. So, uh, oh. lol, it's Leah, who we had on our show. Uh, go watch that interview. Um, it will be a really good precursor. Is that the right word to yeah. today's episode? Um, so she released her debut album while we were on tour. Uh, and the tour was called Nothing Lasts Forever, including this tour, which is a great name. 
And she was selling vinyls and t-shirts, and uh, I, of course, got a t-shirt. But I got a vinyl the last day of the tour, and I had her sign it, and she said, To the best merch homie ever, thanks for being a part of this. Love, Leah. So sweet. Um, and it has the track list, favorite singer, amazing song, Call to Fling, Banger, What's That to You, love that song. Uh, Say Grace, Hey, 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 featuring Smooth Brain. We got to see them on tour, which they were really good. I had heard a lot of good things about them, and I understand why. With or Without You, that song, definitely my favorite on this album. Um, favorite singer, Call to Fling, and What's That to You, and Exit Plan had already come out before this album came out, and they were all bangers. I love Leah's music, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone on tour with her. But uh, I'm obsessed with all of those songs, but I was not expecting to love With or Without You as much as I did. So go listen to that. Go listen to the whole album. Uh, you don't have to have this to listen to it. You can listen to it digitally. Uh, fell into a crapshoot and called it love. Another good one. And it, of course, ends with Nothing Lasts Forever. Uh, which is how she ended her show. And then she came back for an encore. And the coolest part, it is... I actually haven't opened this myself. It's Ooh, a splatter vinyl. Nice. Oh, so awesome. she did with, I think it's called Precision Pressing was the company. And yeah, it's a blue and green vinyl. Uh, once again, watch our interview. Her hair is blue and green. Everything about her is blue and green. Uh, literally the joke the whole tour was, oh my goodness, this thing is blue and green. It's so LOL, it's Leah coded. The <laughs> earth is blue and green. It's so LOL, it's Leah coded. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of Leah, and we'll talk more about it. But uh, it's a great album, uh, great music, pop punk. Uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it. But I just wanted to show off the vinyl, and I got a ton of other really cool merch, both from Leah and Dawn, the other band that was co-headlining this tour. Um, so I'm sure I'll show that stuff off on like my Instagram and stuff, if you want to follow it. Or follow our Instagram, and I'm sure I'll share it. On our stories or something. Yeah, that'd be cool to fire up on the vinyl. For oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Except it'll be slightly sped up on my yeah. vinyl because I have a terrible, <laughs> I have a terrible player. It's just like, just barely too fast. But yeah. fast enough that you notice yeah. that yeah. it ain't right. Yeah. My favorite singer, Wednesday, but you play with your guitar. That's what it's going to sound I like. you want to just like run around like Mario or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. David. My show and yell um, is a picture... My niece drew me. Aww. It says, this is Day Day on it. Because she calls me Day Day. And then she wrote, I love my girlfriend's name on it, on the shirt. <laughs> and she spelled her name right. And nice. she's, Wow, that's she's a pretty good name. three years old. She spelled her name wow. right. Wow. I was like, that's really impressive. No one was coaching her or anything. So That's really impressive. If you guys think that this looks like me, let me know. So, I mean, is that your costume? Your this is my today? yes. I have three fingers in this costume. Um, three my fingers a knife. Th this one makes <laughs> sense because the right arm is bigger. I am right handed, so that oh, okay, makes sense okay. because I'm dominant with my right arm. My belt, my pants are really low. I do wear my pants kind of low, so that makes sense. <laughs> and then the shoes are like basically non-existent. But I mean, come on, my shoes are not really existent either. I need yeah. new shoes. But you got like that basketball player vibe in this. I like, do. Like yeah, the jersey do. looking. Do. I do. Shirt. Yeah. You look like Troy Bolton. And the most. <laughs> but the most interesting thing is she thinks my hair is brown. And it kind of is brown. But it's just so funny to me because my hair used to be so blonde. Yeah. Like it was very blonde. I mean, um, I would say your hair is brown. Right. But it's but. definitely gotten brown now. But but yeah, that's... um. That was sweet. I just Very wanted to cute. share it. Where are you going to put it? Um, The fridge is taken, so I can't put it on the fridge because there are already so many pictures that she uh -oh. drew me on there. Um, Maybe you need to start like a little scrapbook. That's a good idea. I might do that. I have, some, I have a, one for my Polaroids. I might start one for uh, that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But, um, also, I forgot to talk about my costume. Yeah, go Nobody ahead. wants to know about your Does costume. It, do you guys know who I am? Uh, Saturn? You remind me of you. Carl from Jimmy Neutron, but I know that's not it. Okay, maybe that's not, just you. not Jimmy Neutron, but it's a cartoon. Here's a hint. Why do I want to say Edna? Not Edna. I can't see that far. Maybe. Is that Rugrats? Yes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Um, What's his name? I didn't watch the, the show. The, up. the, what you call it? The, 
He didn't have headgear, but he did have red hair. I'm Chucky from Rugrats. Yay. <laughs> um, not Chucky the doll, but yeah. uh, that would be a sick costume too. Be pretty scary. Um, shush. Uh, so yeah, I needed an easy costume because we had a Halloween show for tour, and I um, I already overpacked. I did not follow Quentin's advice, and I packed way too much, and we had to move my suitcase around a lot. Um, but that being said, I was like, okay, I don't need to be packing, like, a full pinata outfit or, like, a full disco ball. <laughs> like, yeah. so let me let me pack something light and chill. Let's so. just ignore, you know, the, 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 the drummer doesn't need his kit. Get the disco ball. Exactly, exactly. We don't need the guitarist amplifier. So Get the disco ball. I knew I was already going to be wearing these shorts because they're green. They go really well with LOL, it's Leah. Um, and then this was just one extra t-shirt. And then I actually have this Angelica necklace. You can't see it on camera for sure. And then I found this dead stock Rugrats Angelica necklace with a Cynthia charm, uh, which Cynthia is the doll that Angelica played with. And I recently found my Cynthia doll that I had a long time ago. It's a long story. Anyway, so this is from the Nick box, which is where I got the Cynthia doll. Uh, from years and years ago, Nickelodeon had a like subscription box, and uh, it was a simple costume. So I was like, let me go with that. And then I was going to do a more extravagant one for tonight, but y'all, I was just not feeling it. So I'm like, you know what? This fits the tour, my outfit. I wore this on tour, so here we go. Um, and these are not my real glasses. They do not have lens. So. <laughs> you just poke yourself in the eye. Yes. It's perfect. Um, but yeah, I'm Chucky. I don't have the red hair. But close enough. We're now in a world where Dale went the hardest on his costume. Whoa. Like, this is very strange. But. This is. You also thought of it very last minute. I but did. it is. It is. I will say it's I pretty did. good. Yeah. The only thing is his shoes are red and mine are yellow, but they still match. So. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about mine. It. I'm like, mine are not, not your red. shoes. Well, your shoes are yellow. Mine are yellow. <laughs> slippers yeah i wouldn't Let's... say that's necessarily biker but no sure. but our feet aren't on camera so mine are well, actually yours are sometimes too like yeah. full like toes and everything <laughs> there we go anyway on that note do we have anything else we need to talk about before we take a break let's take a break come back and talk about what it's like for patrick on his very first ever tour tour Thank you once again for listening to Successfully Unsigned. I would like to take a moment during this break to remind you to visit our website at su-podcast.com to view all of the newest and latest content that we put out. Also, do us a huge favor and hit like and subscribe on this YouTube video and like and rate us on your favorite streaming platform. Each one of those things helps us out tremendously. We would love to hear your thoughts on what artists we should have on next, what content we should cover, what kind of topics we should discuss, and any tips and tricks you might have in the music industry. Thank you for being one of our favorite listeners and enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we have been waiting in anticipation of <laughs> literally for th for three weeks. Like, I haven't seen Patrick in a month, so I need to know how your birthday went. I need to know oh, about yeah. this tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to know how much of Quentin's advice you followed. I know we talked about the, the clothes thing <laughs> a little bit, but just where do we even start? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. That You said that you guys uh, rode in a van, correct? No, so a... we rode, the, so there was two bands that uh, co-headline, LOL, it's Leah, and Dawn, which if you follow our Instagram, uh, we've talked about Dawn, actually, I've probably talked about Dawn on this episode a lot, they're like this nostalgic early 2000s band, they did a song with Bowling for Soup, a parody of 1985 called 2002, um, they are some of the like most genuine artists that I've ever met, so when I found out that they we're going on tour with LOL Leah. As y'all know, I love Leah's music. Um, I was like, I'm there. I'm sold. Uh, I will be at at least four of the shows. And then Atlanta from Hexproof was like, why don't you just ask to go on tour with them? And I was like, that is a good idea because I am unemployed. So <laughs> I had the time and I, I reached out to Leah and she was like, uh, yeah, if you want to help out with merch, I'll, I will be fully honest. I... This is a DIY tour. So that is kind of the difference uh, versus like something like Quentin was talking about. Um, even though I know they have their own kind of challenges as smaller artists. 
uh, Leah and Dawn are both smaller artists in the long run. They have mm-hmm. a really, both have really good online presence, but uh, Leah was basically acting as her own tour manager. So that being said, uh, she did a really amazing job at completing her first tour. Um, but uh, so basically my role was just, yeah, merch person. And we took two different cars. So Mike and McCall, who are part of Dawn, live in Nashville. So I drove up to their house and we left on Monday, October 7th to, we were going to drive straight to Jersey. We ended up stopping at my parents' house, but um, yeah, it was just one van <laughs> packed very, very tightly. Like I said, I definitely overpacked. Uh, I took a really big suitcase. Don't, don't do that. If you're going on <laughs> tour, take the smallest suitcase that you own because yeah. I felt like such a burden. There were so many times where I was like, uh, do you need me to like switch or like find a different suitcase? And they're like, no, it's okay. It's okay. We'll, fi- we'll fit it somehow. <laughs> find a different suitcase? <laughs> well, like, how would you? I was, uh, when I was, um, when I was at Mike and McCall's house, like they were packing the car and I was like, oh. oh, maybe I need to find a different one. Then when we were at my parents' house, I was like, I can switch suitcases with one of my parents, like if they have a smaller suitcase. Yeah. Anyway, that being said, though, I did grab an overnight bag from my mom and that did help a lot. That way I wasn't having to like lug a suitcase out every single night. Hey. Um. So, yeah, lots of sleepless nights. Lots of bad food. So I that was the other thing. I was like, okay, I need to figure out what I'm gonna bring on tour, like Quentin talked about food wise. Nope. Mm-mm. Did not happen. <laughs> so I think one thing we're learning here is we get some great advice on this podcast, especially from people, <laughs> artists that come on uh <laughs> and 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 talk about their experience. Um but our conversion rate firsthand of taking that well it was it was it was making an application it was on purpose because what patrick's doing here oh is he's showing what not he's showing what not to do for all of you what not to do on your first two there's a title for this episode no (laughs) hey (laughs) that sounds terrible um yeah the food thing was hard it was very hard Mm. um because everyone else is eating out and so you're just like okay well i'm gonna eat out too i will say i will say this um since i was a merch person i did not have to pay for a lot um no lot we had to pay for one hotel but my dad works in hotels so we got a super cheap rate like i'm talking about split between all of us it was like 15 dollars. wow so that was fine outside of that i did not have to pay for lodging um I did not have to pay for gas. I did not have to drive. Um, you were a working man. Yeah. And so, and even so, the band still occasionally paid for my food. Mm. Not every meal. And it was it was purely out of, like, kindness. I was not expecting it. So, um, like I said, touring with, like, people that are really amazing is so important. So, uh, yeah, the food thing was very hard. Uh, it was a lot of late nights. So we start. So we got to Jersey on Tuesday the eighth, um, and then Leah. I stayed at Leah's house because she lives in Jersey now. Uh, if you didn't know, she moved from Nashville, and uh, she took me to the Jersey Shore, which was so cool and so <laughs> sweet. She did not have to do that, but she's like, "Let's just have like one chill night." She's like, "It's just gonna be you and me because the photographer hadn't gotten there yet." The drummer and the guitarist uh, lived close enough to her to where they didn't need to stay at her house. And Mike and McCall were staying with a different friend. So it was just me and her. And we went to go see the Shore House, which was really cool. I bought a t-shirt from the Jersey Shore store and two magnets. Um, It was really weird and eerie because it was the only store that was open on the boardwalk. She's like, are you sure they're even open? Because it's off season. So there was no other stores open, but this store stays open from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. every single day Whoa. of the year. I'm like, ooh. So Dedication. they miss, yeah, they miss. We got to tour the house, which was really cool. Um, So then on Wednesday, the Philly show was the first show. And that was when I met her, the whole crew. So we had me, of course, doing merch, Leah who was the headliner, Dawn, so Mike and McCall. And then we had the drummer, Pete Benigno. And Pete drummed for both Dawn and Leah. Pete met Dawn the day before tour started. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's a very good drummer. Shout out to Pete. Wow. And then we had Dave Carroll, uh, who was the fill-in guitarist for Leah. Pete is like Leah's kind of official drummer, whereas Dave was a fill-in. Uh, Dave, I didn't realize, I, me, Mike, and McCall actually saw Dave perform at the Bowling for Soup concert because he was in one of the opening bands called Keep Flying. And he's only 20 years old. Uh, so they're coming back here in December 15th, hoping to maybe do a little interview or something. Um, cause he's a, he's a really sweet kid, like very good head on his shoulders about to graduate, but touring like all over the world. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool or all over the country, I guess. Um, and he's in a lot of different bands. Check out few faces, keep flying. Uh, and of course, LOL, it's Leah. And then we had the photographer, Sophie Harris, uh, which let me tell you, y'all, she might be my new photographer. She's very good. And that was before I even really got to know her well. But the the crew itself, Leah put together a really good crew. Um, We all got along really well. Like, there was really no times where, like, there were hurt feelings or, like, people were upset with each other. Um, We all just, like, laughed the entire time uh we were all pretty easygoing um we're all like kind of people pleasers so that was probably the biggest thing where it would be like where do you guys want to go and we'd be like i don't know where do you want to (laughs) go but other than that uh it was it was really really special um it was seriously the time of my life and like i will treasure this experience forever um but as far as the philly show goes so that one was definitely a rough start uh, the sound guy, um, you know, no shade, but it was not a great experience. Um, the, none of the bands could like hear themselves or anything. Mm. And then, um, it was our first show. So we really didn't know what to expect. So it was kind of, we were all kind of scrambled. Luckily it was the smallest show. So it kind of was a good, just start. Mm. Um, I will say at every single show, Don had super fans there, which was really cool to see. Like, especially being the merch person, because yeah. you're seeing like these super fans come up and being like, oh my goodness, I want to buy all of it. And Don has some of the coolest merch. They have they were selling iPods that oh. had the, like I said, they're all about like nostalgia. Huh. So they were selling iPods that they hand bedazzled. Um, and this she Look, she is open about this, so I, I feel okay to say it. They are knockoff iPods from Five Below, but they work like real iPods. Mm-hmm. Nice. And they uploaded all their music onto it. Like, what kind of iPods are we talking? We're talking like iPod Shuffles, iPod Nanos? What are we talking? Uh, Nanos. The ones with the little screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It is super cool merch. Like, they have, like, the craziest merch. So, they had the iPods, and they had all their music on there, including unreleased stuff. Nice. Um, they had That's CDs smart. and then they had a mini CD NFC tag. Have you all heard of that? Oh yeah. 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 So basically you open it up and like you scan it and it brings up their, uh, EP BRB TTYL. Yeah. They had real, they had like four or five different kinds of shirts, including a tour shirt, which almost sold out by the end of tour. Um, they had mood rings and the decoder was what Dawn song are you? Which is really cool. <laughs> um, and then they had mixtapes and um, that they like put together themselves and friendship bracelets and lighters and posters and uh, just a whole bunch of different kind of stuff. Like they have really cool merch. Um, and I really we had like a pink and green kind of thing going on because Aaliyah and then Dawn. So that was really cool. So it was just really cool to see like them interact with their fans uh, and to see such dedicated fans at every single show every single one um and yeah so that was a really great show or that was an all right show and then jersey was you know leah's from there the venue was super cool so we got to see a lot of her friends that was the first time i made tips which was really cool i was like okay good good things are looking up um (laughs) you can pay for lunch the next day yeah right it's a great feeling trust me yeah yeah literally um and so, uh, that was really great too. And then, um, what was, we did four shows in a row, which I will say was a lot. So it was Philly and then 
Philly and then Jersey. Jersey. And so at that point, it was just me and Sophie staying with Leah. And then I felt like by Baltimore, which was the Friday night, that was really when tour felt like it started because now we were all traveling together. Because Pete and Dave were going back home after the Philly show, after the Jersey show. Leah was still at her house. And so at Baltimore, that was the best show. And that was a Halloween show. Um, We had the energy there was amazing. Um, Smooth Brain performed. Like I said, Smooth Brain, I was really impressed with them. Uh, they are unfortunately now on a hiatus after <laughs> this oh, these no. performances, which is upsetting. You can go to their Instagram. But um, yeah, it was... I don't know. It was it was really incredible. I met like this super super fan of Dawn that has like a fan page for them. Whoa! That I have interacted with on Instagram. This girl, her name is Amanda. Shout out to Amanda slash Y two K Dawn slash Junkie for Lolo. She has another fan page for the artist Lolo. Um, she literally posted on her Dawn fan account on my birthday. Happy birthday, Patrick! You're the best merch person ever. And like, uh, nice. she is like the sweetest person. Um. And we kind of, like, rebooted Dawn's Discord. I kind of helped them with that. And so I've been, like, talking to all these, like, super fans on there. And just everyone's so, so sweet. Um, Like, on my birthday, like, they were all messaging me, being like, happy birthday. Like, you've done so great with the merch. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, it, it just makes you feel so included. Yeah. Nice. Um, And like I said, Mike and McCall are, like, the most genuine people ever. And Leo is, of course, you guys know I love her, too. And the photographer, I told her, I'm like, I feel like you're my friendship soulmate. <laughs> like, me and her are just so, I love her so much. Um, shout out, Sophie. Go check out her work if you need a photographer. Um, and then we went to North Carolina after that. It was great. I got to see my friend who came to the show. Shout out, Alessandra. Kamala Harris was in town. Not That's for right. the show. Wish, wish she would pull up. <laughs> she makes Kamala, it. <laughs> but makes an appearance. Um, and then we went to. We were on our way to Orlando after that, but we stopped in Charleston, uh, and just kind of that was at, at that point. That was after our four runs of shows, so we kind of started having off days, and that's when we really started like spending more time together, going out, uh, just hanging out. Um, and so the shows, of course, we were up, you know, till probably two a.m. or so. Every night. And then, you know, we're hanging out. And then we're still staying up to like 3, 4 a.m. So, it was a lot of uh, late nights, late mornings, because we were waking up late. But it was nice. It was nice to just kind of like take our time on those off days. Uh, we traveled the rest of the way to Orlando on Monday. Um, Tuesday was the Orlando show. And it was amazing. It was a really good show. And then we had an after party. Um, and at this like Halloween themed place, which was super cool. And everyone sang happy birthday to me right at midnight, which was so sweet. That is awesome. Um, and then at the after party, they had been telling us we have a surprise for y'all on Monday. We have a surprise for y'all or on Wednesday. Uh, because that was one of our off days in Orlando. So I'm thinking, like, there's no way it's like a theme park or anything, right? Because that that'd be like way too much. And they announced that we went to Epcot, or we were going to Epcot. So I got to spend my birthday at Epcot with my pin that says, Happy Birthday, Patrick. We're celebrating Patrick. And all these Disney workers telling me happy birthday. And it was just so special and so cool. I got to eat around the world in 11 different countries. Um, <laughs> I will say that <laughs> it was an amazing trip, and I'm so grateful. And um, it was really cool that I literally got to go for free. But I was like, well, shoot, there goes all my tip money. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it was all spent on, like, food and stuff. Yeah. But um, I got some Christmas gifts for my mom and my sister and a little bit of a discount because the guy we were with is a cast member, which also helped getting us into Epcot. Um, And then, yeah, then we had the Atlanta show and Atlanta from Hexproof pulled up. Uh, Glitch come was there, which he's really cool. Caroline Riley, who is someone who I've been wanting to see. She's like 21 and has the voice of an angel. She was on the lineup, so I was really excited about that. Everyone did amazing. Um, Sydney from Pop Punk Promo. You guys have heard me talk about Pop Punk Promo. She flew in from Minnesota to come to the Atlanta and Nashville show. And she was even cooler in person. Um, go listen to Pop Punk Promo. Both Dawn and Leah and Atlanta from Hexproof and Caroline Riley have been featured on it. 
um, and Smooth Brain. So um, some of those people multiple times on her show. And then we had the Murfreesboro show, Nashville Murfreesboro show in Murfreesboro at a house venue called Diana Street, which is super cool. Highly suggest them. Um, they were super nice and uh, they made it into like a whole event with like vintage shops and stuff. And I dressed up as a pinata because that ended up being a Halloween show, but no one knew it was a Halloween show. So I was like one of the only people dressed oh, up no. <laughs> in my pinata costume, which I said I was retiring last year, but here we are. Yeah. Yeah. And Liar. Um, never retired. I know. That's never. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but it was an amazing, amazing time. And like, I would love to do it again. And I will miss these people. I, I hope. Honestly, that if there is another tour in the future, that like it could be like a similar or same group of people. Obviously, it's unlikely, and even if it was, it would probably still be different in some ways. But uh, as far as far as first tour goes, I knew I would enjoy it, but I don't think I realized like how much. Yeah, I like I don't have anything bad to say about it. Right, even with the like lack of sleep. And terrible diet and everything. Like, I have nothing bad to say about it. So, um, I know I just rambled for so long about it. Uh, so, Dale, feel free to cut out whatever junk you want. But <laughs> what questions, I guess, do y'all have about it? Uh, beyond what I talked about. I, Yeah. Well, I want to know one thing. Okay, so I've, I've held off on asking questions, even though I got yeah, to spend some time Yeah, the first day, I kind of was like, I literally told Lynn. I was like, yeah, even Dale, like, wouldn't really ask me anything. Or, like, he wasn't really responsive to anything I was saying. And I was like, maybe he's waiting for the podcast. I and, so. and I was. He I've, I've, I've intentionally been waiting to ask questions. So I know very little overall of what happened on the tour. Y'all know almost as much as I do. And I'm about <laughs> to ask a question. I think that's going to reveal the last thing that I think that I know about tour. Your, your The tour that you were on uh, that hasn't already been discussed on this podcast. And that is what happened to Diana Street. Oh, yeah. The, the cops, you mean? Yeah. So the cops were called... At Diana Street in the middle. So Hexproof was the close. Oh, I forgot. Atlanta was literally part of the, the last show. Um, and Hexproof was the last on the set. And she's about a little, le- little less than halfway through her set. And she's announcing her, her next song. She just like did Hot To Go and Stay. My two favorite. I, uh, she did Hot To Go cover, which was really good. Um, we had a lot of Chapel Roan on this tour. We my the photographer dressed up as Chapel Roan. Smooth Brain did a hot to go cover. Atlanta did a hot to go or Hexproof did a hot to go cover. Caroline Riley did a Good Luck Babe cover. So lots of Chapel Roan in this tour. But um uh Ethan, shout out Ethan, the guy from Diana Street, I guess kind of the runner of it, comes out and like pulls Atlanta aside from the microphone and is like whispering to her it have you guys ever seen spongebob the movie no okay there's a scene at the beginning of spongebob the movie where mr krabs announces the manager of the crusty crab and spongebob is like i'm a shoe in like it's gonna be me and it ends up he an- announces squidward but spongebob like is so tunnel vision that he goes up there and is like thank you guys so much da, da, da. and Cr- mr krabs like comes up to him and is like whispering to him and he's like what and like into microphone he's like i didn't get the manager position uh, you're i'm making a complete fool of myself that's literally how it felt like <laughs> she's she just off to the side in front of everyone and she comes back up she's like all right so the cops are here so we're gonna sing one last song to, for y'all and if you're an emo you know this one so come up here and dance and cops you can join us too and it, <laughs> they sang their cover of misery business and so crowd went wild um they had like a fire there and like it was just really good vibes all around um and then the the cops were chill about it they were just kind of like i think they had been called multiple times that night at this point so they kind of were like okay can you just wrap it up basically for like noise or what yeah yeah it's a house venue so you know how it goes Mm. but um yeah that was that was most of it i i guess the other thing i did want to talk about real quick is uh, like I said, just how proud I am of Leah. Uh, mm. Seriously, she did this tour pretty much by herself. Like, Dawn was obviously the co-headliner, but they kind of let her take the reins on of it. She booked all the venues, uh, got all the connections. Um, and I, I've noticed more and more, like, talking to her, like, she has a lot of really good connections. So this is a really important thing for artists. Make sure you're connected. It's all about who you know. And she was able to pull off this tour by herself, act as her own tour manager, be 
put together this own DIY tour because of the people that she knows and the people she's connected with and being able to pull out a crowd because I think there are some people she, she was explained to me why she waited so long to go on tour. Cause she's technically been an artist for nine years and she explained, I didn't want to go on tour until I knew that I had some sort of fan base that would actually want to come to my shows and not that there's anything wrong if you're a really small artist and you maybe don't have a great fan base, but you just want to go out on the road and go to all these different shows. I think there's something uh, good about that as well and a, re- a really good experience. But at the same time, too, I can see her point of like, how cool is it that she can say for her first tour, like she met fans of her and she was signing things and Dawn was signing things and like she was... I, she's like a little more of an established artist and she's able to say, I did this all by myself and I was able to pull these crowds. Yeah. And so it, I'm just really proud of her. Um, and the album is amazing. I love all her music. I really do. And so I'm really proud of her on that too. Um, but yeah, I guess any other questions before we wrap up? I want to know what was your favorite moment on tour? I don't like know. All of them. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there was a lot of really good moments. Um, it, it, okay, you know what? In Charleston, that was when we had to get the last minute hotel because we didn't know we were going to stay in Charleston. And so it was me, Mike and McCall got their own. Uh, they were staying with McCall's uncle, but he didn't have room for all of us. Um, and it, her uncle was very, very sweet. Uh, and I know he would have taken us all in, if he had the room, but he's in a one bedroom. So we had to get a, a hotel room with me, Dave, Leah, Sophie, and Pete. So that's five people, one hotel room. So it's very packed. Um, and we just were watching like old YouTube videos. So we were watching Charlie the Unicorn, Potter <laughs> Puppet Pals. Um, Sophie and Dave are really into Family Guys. So we watched a few clips of that. Um, and just like old nostalgic videos, we were all just having a really fun time. We had to like squeeze into the car and like we were like singing Drake and Josh and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that was, I don't know. I mean, a lot of those nights felt like that or Orlando. Orlando was also a really good night. Like um, after the after party, we went to go like find tacos and um, we just were like walking around Orlando and uh, just having a really good time. We just found out like we were going to Epcot the next day and like, it was technically my birth. Like I got sung to for my birthday, and um, there was just a lot of like camaraderie at that moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the entire tour, but yeah, it was all of it was amazing. But I guess those are probably the two biggest highlights. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. That it was like your birthday during the tour. It was yeah, so cool. So awesome. It was so co- it it made for Loki like one of the best birthdays ever. Right. Love mm-hmm. that. So as 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 running merch, like how would you describe um, your experience to like somebody who's never run merch and they're thinking about like doing merch with a run? What kind of advice? What kind of thought? Now that you've done at least one, like what was on the job side of things similar and different from what you expected going into that? Um, just do it because it's really not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really not that hard. I mean, if you've ever worked retail in any way, shape, or form, or like any sort of customer service job, you'll be fine. Do you use like, like Square Pay or something? Yeah, it's Square. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your phone um, and like a little square. It was a little different. I here's the thing. Keep in mind this is a DIY tour, so like the first night in Philly, I wasn't selling a ton, but in like Baltimore in Murfreesboro, surprisingly too. I was like actually working. I was like booked and busy. Like I, there was lines. Yeah. Uh, which was really cool. The Baltimore show also had a tattoo artist right by, by us. Hmm. So it, that was, I it, thank you to McKenzie. Shout out McKenzie who like kind of put the whole Frankenfest together for that night. Um, because she put us by the tattoo artist, uh, which we are very grateful for. Cause it just kind of made people look at our merch. But um, yeah, I mean, you got to keep track of things, obviously. And it also depends on the artist. So I will say, like, since I was doing both, Leah, 
she spent a lot of money on her merch and she was very like, please make sure that you have this thing done, this thing done, this thing done, organized in this way. So she was a little more particular about her merch, which is totally fine. Like, I want to do things the absolute right way. Whereas Mike and McCall, I would say they probably spent a lot of money on their merch as well, but they were not as particular about it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't feel like this is exposing them, but like the first night I was like, Hey Mike, like, do you want me to keep track of inventory? Cause I was, uh, on the first night we just used, uh, Venmo instead of square. And so square will automatically take out whatever inventory, but Mike was like, no, it's okay. And then later, like they started like giving away some stuff to fans. Oh, I was no. like, are they you? run out. I was like, are you sure you don't want me to keep track of inventory? He's like, nah, if, if we decide to, we'll, I'll let you know. But also, Mike and McCall had probably five to six boxes of merch. I mean, they had, like, boxes. They had a lot. They had four different kinds of t-shirts. They had all the other stuff. Uh, They had, like, a whole setup. They had DVDs, uh, like, just a whole bunch of stuff. So their merch was a lot more intricate in that way, but they weren't as particular about their merch. Whereas Leah, she had posters, t-shirts, and vinyls. And then stickers that were free. And so it was her setup was not as intricate, but I had to be a little more particular with her things. And the other difference is she had an iPad with her Square app along with a card reader. Right. Whereas for Mike and McCall or Dawn, I just use my phone with the Square app. And so I didn't have to keep track of an iPad or anything. Whereas like with her, she's like, hey, please make sure the iPad is not like just out and about for people to grab right the square reader is not out and about the cash box isn't the cash box isn't out and about um whereas like for my for dawn i was just like handing them the cash directly so Mm. uh just definitely some differences in that uh so it kind of depends on the artist but either way it's pretty simple it's about what you would expect um if if i was working you know merch for a much bigger artist Maybe I'd feel a little, a little differently, a little more overwhelmed. But for the most part, it was pretty chill. And and people are really nice. That's the other thing. Just if you were if you're used to customer service, put on that smile. Cause you want those tips, right? <laughs> and uh we were talking to Luke Robbins. Uh Dale just go check out Luke Robbins music video. Dale worked on yeah, it. Yeah, it looks great. Far it looks really F-A-A-A-R. Great. Uh, it's a really good song, really great music video. But he was over and we were talking and he does merch for a lot of different artists and comedians and such. And he was giving me some tips and he was like, you know, as a merch person, change your tip percentage. So I changed my tip percentage to 3%, 5% and 10% versus 15, 20, 25. Yeah. Because he was like, people are more likely to just throw you like 60 cents versus two or three dollars. And there's still a custom one. So sometimes people would still give me like five dollars. So yeah. quantity over quality. Yeah. So did I make a ton of money in merch? No. Like I probably made a little less than two hundred. But not terrible. It ain't and nothing. <laughs> it ain't nothing. Yeah. And I got I didn't have to pay for gas. I didn't have to pay for lodging. Yeah. I didn't have to drive. And I had the time of my life. Mm-hmm. And so it was a hundred percent worth it to me. Yeah. Um and yeah, so I I guess just keep that in mind and like be as nice, be as interactive as possible. The fact that I had people wishing me happy birthday on the Dawn Discord was really sweet, but also shows like not to toot my own horn that I made some sort of impact on them right. because they're saying, oh my, it's best merch person ever. So you I'm got like, involved and, you know, it's, it goes back to that like old adage of like you get out what you put into it kind of concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got involved. So exactly, yeah. exactly. And we are 31 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Cameras Shoot. are probably off. But we are going to take a quick break and come back for our last segment. Hey guys, what's up? It's DJ Patty G. I hope you guys have been enjoying the show so far. If you want to go find more, go to our website, su-podcast.com. We have lots of cool playlists there, whether it be from artists that we've had on the show or with other independent artists from all over the world. Also, make sure to follow us at successfully underscore unsigned on all of our platforms, as well as unsigned podcast on TikTok. 
you guys will be our best friend if you go rate us five stars on all platforms and if you like and subscribe this video make sure to keep watching so you can see more of our shenanigans and other tomfoolery thanks guys well the the one last thing that i did want to say about tour is um i guess as far as advice goes if you're wanting to go on tour with someone this might not be true for everyone. Some people, it might be easier if you're not a fan of the music or if you're not as, like, tied to the musicians. But for me, like I said, I every single one of Leah's songs, I love. Dawn's music and, like, whole aesthetic, I'm obsessed with. Like, yeah. these, these guys can tell you how much I bring them up, especially Dawn, like, all their stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that helped, too. Adds to it. And I... I had someone tell me, you know, you're probably not going to like want to be when I, when I go to some, some, some local shows, not all, but like if I'm an actual fan of them, like I try and go up and like be as energetic just to help th support them. And, uh, someone was like, well, you're probably not going to be doing that every single night, especially by the end of it. You're probably gonna be over the music. I was not, I was not over the music at any point. I was still partying hard by the end of the tour. Um, and that was that was the nice thing too about like not being super busy as a merch person that most people didn't really come up until except like in between sets or before or after the show. So I could go out on the floor and I would just look back at the merch table every now and then just make sure no one was over there. But it was nice that I could kind of like go out and support Dawn and Leah and whatever artists were on the bill and just like have a good time. Like, literally yeah. go to a bunch of concerts every night, and it was all with music that I knew I would love. And, uh, yeah, so that was really cool. So I guess I would suggest if maybe if it's a smaller artist, you know, going with someone that you know you're going to, like, have a good time with their music every night. But, like I said, for some people, it may be like, no, actually, I think it'd be easier for me to not care as much about the music i maybe still wouldn't suggest going with someone who you don't like their music at all because then you'll probably get annoyed yeah um but beyond that it was it was it was really cool just to like go i was so excited to just like see them perform every night and like i'm now like listening to these albums both this and brb ttyl ep by dawn just sad being like man i miss them performing these songs also, Leah performed the year 3000 by the Jonas Brothers, <laughs> uh, which I will say I did suggest to her. All I'm saying. That's a good one. Um, because I was like, that would fit so well with your voice because she has like that deep register. Like it would. And she's like, it does fit really well with my voice. And it like goes with the whole space theme that she has going on. And the crowd went crazy every night, uh, including myself and McCall. So a lot of fun. Okay. And, you know, and one thing that. Uh, you kind of touched on that maybe at the very beginning and then we haven't really, I guess, directly spoken about, but the idea of if you want something, if you want to do something, uh, sometimes just asking is all it takes. Mm -hmm. Like knowing people, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and having a relationship with those people already is a huge thing. But, you know, maybe I think you we can take from this, from Patrick's experience that if you want to try something, just ask literally if you have the means to do it then do it like leah i reached out to her because like I said atlanta was the one who told me to just ask and she was like you know i've had a lot of people ask me like but sh she was like i think some people think maybe just because of our online presence that like we're gonna be selling out shows and stuff and i will say like we had fans who were saying like oh i wanted to make sure like I ordered my merch before the show and I got my tickets as soon as possible because I was sure this was going to sell out, which is so sweet and great and amazing. And, you know, hoping that one day that is true for these artists. But as of right now, unfortunately, it's n that's not true. Like, we didn't sell out any shows. Still had a really good crowd for a lot of them. But um, Leah was like, you know, we're having people, like, I've had people reach out, but the thing is, like, I don't really, she's like, I'm doing this tour all by myself. Like, I really don't have the means to be paying a merch person. Yeah. And so it ended up working out because Leah and Dawn honestly really were too busy to be worrying about merch. Like, I think it would have just stressed them out. So like not once again, not trying to like to my own horn, but I think it was helpful just to have that one extra person there yeah, to just kind of body. assist with whatever. Yeah. And so, and like Dawn, they have a whole setup with their, um, stage. Uh, and so like, just loading in and out for them 
Mm-hmm. Once again, Leah was actually pretty easy. <laughs> like Leah was pretty easy, but Dawn had a lot of stuff in their car, and it was very packed. Um, and it it worked great for the shows. And Leah used a lot of it too, so it ended up working out for both fans. But um, it just helped to have that extra hand, and especially for the merch and everything. And I even told Dawn, I was like, "Y'all have so much merch," and I've been to one of their shows when they didn't have nearly as much merch. But because they kind of have that online presence, they still usually have dedicated fans coming to each show. And they are very sweet, genuine people who want to talk to their fans. And so I I told McCall, I was like, you know, for whatever future shows you guys have, hit me up. I will literally work off tips and a free dinner. Um, and whether they do or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I was like, you guys do, should not be worrying about the merch. Right. Like, you should be out there talking to your fans talking to whatever artists, making whatever connections. And so I think that was very helpful. Um, Did they have a meet and greet or anything? Not, no. Like it was a kind of informal, like it, after it the was, show. It was, it, it was, yeah, it was just kind of like you, a lot of people just came up and met them before, or after the show. Um, but Dawn would like take, they had like a film camera, so they'd take pictures with them there and stuff. Um, so it was just a kind of a matter where Leah was like, you know, I'm sure we could use the extra hand, but I'm just letting you know right now that like, I don't, I would feel bad not giving you any money, but like I, we will not be able to give you much money. Yeah. Um, and I hope if Leah or Dawn sees this, this is not like bashing them by any means. It's a DIY tour. It's expensive to be an artist, period. And it's something that you had requested from them. It wasn't like they came to you saying, Hey, we want you to work this, but here's, you know, five bucks. Right? Exactly. That was something that you would ask and exactly. sought out yourself. And so I, straight up, I straight up said too, I'm like, I literally will work for tips. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I will do whatever you need me to do. I'm mm-hmm. like, basically all I request is like, I don't have to pay for gas and lodging, which I didn't. So it, it worked out really great. Um, but Leah was like, honestly, I, would like to have you because these other people are reaching out are people I don't really know. And she's yeah. like, you're someone who constantly is reposting my stuff on stories, whether it be through the podcast or your personal page who, um, obviously we've had her on our show. Mm-hmm. I've gone to her shows. I've gone to Dawn shows. Um, and so it just kind of worked out in that kind of setting that relationship. Like I really did turn in from fan to friend like yeah. uh, honestly yeah. Leah Leah we met because she reached out to us about our podcast um but the second I listened to her music I was hooked and I was going to her shows and it very easily could have been she reached out and nothing came from the podcast but because I ended up being a fan I told these guys I was like hey can we get her on and then same with Dawn um like I was a fan first I found them through pop punk promo and started just sharing all their stuff on Instagram. And then I eventually went to a show that they had in Nashville and McCall recognized me because of the interactions we had had and was super sweet. Like she is to every other fan, but because of, you know, I, and I'm not saying, you know, if you're a fan, you're just automatically going to eventually build up that relationship just because they're a small artist. I think for us, we're in the music industry. So it helps mm-hmm. as we have something to offer as well. Yeah, um, for there's sure. a, there's a reason for us to, to be there beyond just, you know, listening to the music, which is a reason enough yes. of, of its own, but it does help in building connections. Exactly. Um, exactly. So it's really yeah. cool that I like can say that these people's music who I love, who I am a fan of, like I now have this super special memory with them that no one else will ever have, like beyond yeah. the seven of us, no one else will ever have those yeah. memories and like of their first tour. So awesome. so cool. And also with that, like, you know, uh, how do I want to say this? If you're, if you're working on stuff, you know, as much as you can try to involve other people, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, turning a fan into a friend it, through being, you know, on merch or whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, having somebody else who plays a different instrument record on your record or whether it's, you know, whatever kind of situation you're working in, music is all about that shared experience of emotion. And yes. it's really hard to share experience and share emotion if you're locked away and doing everything uh, isolated by yourself. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's really tough to do. So as much as you can branch out and involve other people 
um, where they can and where they want to. And yes. try to try to foster an environment, which it seems like this tour was, in which the people that are involved love it and yes. want to do it again and yes. enjoy that. You know, because if you can foster that environment and everybody on the crew that you're touring with loves it, that's going to show in the performance. That's going to show in the person doing merch. That's going to show in after the, after the concert's over and they're talking with fans. Like, people are going to see that joy, that excitement, that love, and that passion mm -hmm. for music, and they're more likely to enjoy what you're doing and want to be a part of that too. It, it really speaks to Leah's character that she put together this crew and like the people all are really kind and just really got along with each other and we're all really easygoing. And I agree, like other people saw that for sure. Like people that I am talking to in Dawn's Discord, uh, I can tell they really feel a part of this tour. Like the I would share videos or they would share their videos and they they are like upset that tour is over too, even though they only got to go to one show, they feel this connection. And of course, part of that is just the connection through the artist. But like, I think they could see what was going on within the crew and like how close we all were and seeing all the pictures and the videos and the behind the scenes and everything. Uh, Cause the photographer, Sophie got so much BTS. Um, and even Atlanta from Hexproof and Sydney from Pop Pump Promo, who joined us for the last two runs and stayed with us uh, in Atlanta, um, they saw just a sliver of it. And they were like, this was so cool. Just the fact that we got to be a part of the, even just a small part of this. And Atlanta was like, I had such a fun time this weekend. And um, just the camera, I think it just really shines through. So it's really cool. Yeah. I would suggest if you um, are looking to tour, or with for merch, uh, Quentin actually sent this website called bobnet.rocks. I will say I have not looked through it at all, so I don't know much about it. Um, and so if it, if you have a bad experience on it, blame Quentin Kufal, the drummer of Allison. <laughs> um, but I did just want to throw that out there. If you're looking to get into merch at all, uh, he yeah. did suggest that. So nice. that's something pretty cool. Solid tip. But now that I'm back from tour, it's time for an even more even better time of the year. Halloween. Halloween. Love it. Dun, dun, dun. I, uh, y'all, I do have something really sad to say, though. What? I did not get to decorate for Halloween this year. Oh. Yeah. Wow, it's a crime dude. against Patrick's view of humanity. I don't think I've not decorated for Halloween since... Probably elementary school. We're born. Yeah. I will, I'll, I'll, say this, I'll say this. My favorite, probably my favorite decoration that you do at, have, have ever done that I've seen that you do have done, <laughs> have do and have done and have do and have done um, is your Halloween Christmas tree. Yeah. That, yes. That's like a that thing is, is, is awesome. It's like sure. it's so different. Like I've not gone anywhere else yeah. and seen personally i've not gone anywhere and seen like a halloween tree yeah yeah but you have one in your house and it's like really cool i'm really proud of that and thing. it's usually that that uh white glazed tree right well maybe not no, it's glazed, a black tree is it i was thinking it was a white one for some reason it was like the it has spider webs on it i put like spider webs ah, on okay. like half okay. of it so okay. i don't have to decorate that half nice. well, it also helps nice. that you have a skeleton like sitting at your kitchen yeah. table yeah. as well yeah that's an all year thing though yeah skeleton is all year roommate. martha the ghost who you've probably seen me hold right here before yeah. is she's in there all year Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle is there. Usually yeah. I have Annabelle riding my carousel horse uh, in my living mm. room, but right now she's just chilling. Wait, 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 wait. You have these Halloween decorations that are all year, right? And yet you had the audacity to come in my house a while back and 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 put me on blast for having my little uh, snowman drum dude out all year. Yeah, but it's different. But it's, it's different, different because but it's different. But you don't have you don't have the same kind of things that I do. What what does your snowman go with anything else in your house? I don't exactly. know my my joy, my liking of seeing it. Yeah, but for me, I have little quirky, fun little characters all around my house twenty four seven beyond sure. just Halloween. Sure. So, I do also have this little pink crochet pumpkin that this old lady at church gave to me, which is really sweet. So, that's my one Halloween decoration this year. So, I am sad I didn't get to decorate, but it was worth it to go on tour for two weeks because I just, September slipped through my fingers and I was like, oh, well, I have one week. That is uh, such a, sorry, that's a nice name for like an album or something. September, September slipped through, slipped my, through fingers. my fingers. Or a band name. Oh, yeah. That'd be sorry. a long band name. Yeah. I'd th be a good album title though. September slips... S S T 
M- no, too much. F- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a condition. It's a, it's a Lana Del Rey. <laughs> yeah. It's a Lana Del Rey Something album. Diagnosable, title. yeah. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard type of title? That's oh, well, that. yeah. Um let me write yeah. that down. So I was I was okay. Like <laughs> you couldn't copy it. <laughs> But yeah, I was sad that I didn't decorate for Halloween, but I don't know. I mean, I know you didn't decorate for Halloween. I, do you have any Halloween decorations? So, <laughs> um, the closest thing I've done to decorate for Halloween is put a pumpkin in the middle of my dining room table okay. mm-hmm. that then mm-hmm. died. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. It, it, Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I will say a rotten pumpkin. I once let pumpkins sail out, out on my balcony for a while because I was just too lazy to take them down the three flights of stairs of my so, apartment. No good. It literally smelled like a baby's diaper. No good. Yeah. It was it disgusting. Really it was so gross. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, my my house sometimes is already scary enough with just how messy it can be. Um, so, yeah. What What are your Halloween plans? Like, are you going to stay and, like, pass out candy or what? So, honestly, I was actually going to talk to you guys about that. I, I have some plans with Steph. Like, we're going to go celebrate our six-month uh, at Rosemary. They're having, like, a little Halloween party down there next week. Cute. Um, but I was like, what? Maybe I, like, throw on one of those roadie mics and do, like, a little go to a haunted house or something. Oh, and, yeah. like, do, like, a little video or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe some content there. Who knows? But, yeah, I want to hit up a haunted house. I um, want to see David get scared and, like, cling to, cling to your girlfriend's arm instead of her to yours. Like, do you, do, are you, like, a like haunted house dude? Um, I'm not. I don't go searching for them. But, okay. I mean, I don't mind them. They're fine. I, so, I, I, like, I, it took me a while, I will say, to get on board with, like, paying someone to scare me. <laughs> like, yeah. the whole concept yeah. of, like, please yeah. scare me. And there was one time I did go to one and recognized someone in the... <laughs> Like there was a guy, he was in a cornfield and he grabbed my leg and I, of course, like, ah, and I looked at him and I was like, Jacob? <laughs> he's like, David! And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. I knew somebody that tried to scare me. So uh, Yeah, that's yeah, how I, I, me with I could picture him, him being yeah. cornfield guy. Well, I, yeah. I, I've been in a couple haunted houses where I used to work, uh, when I worked for the city, oh, they put goodness. on um, yeah. uh, Barfield Bash, which was one that was uh, through like the Barfield like park. Yeah. It was like a hay, haunted hayride kind of thing. Yeah. And we had a nice. station there. That was pretty fun. And then... Um, there was one called Frightensburg, which yeah. was which my department mm-hmm. has spearheaded and like set up and organized and everything. And so we had this whole like old like 1800s or uh, early 1900s like warehouse that we like did all up and then um and and then like all the other houses in like the Cannonsburg Village were like done by different departments and stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And yeah, I got to see a lot of people that I knew go through. But I was wearing masks and stuff, so was, yeah, some of the people recognized you... me, but not everybody <laughs> did. It was so much fun though. There are some people. There are select few people on this planet who take pleasure in like scaring people yeah. in a haunted house. Oh, you yeah. seem like one of those people. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Like, like I started... you get genuine happiness oh, from so seeing people wet themselves. It was so much fun. <laughs> My favorite was when I could get people to go backwards uh, through the thing because I scared them so much. They like wouldn't pass me. They would go like backwards through the loop. And, and so, then like, you were there. Oh, absolutely. Because like I, I, would, uh, I would I would come out behind them when they'd first come in the room. Because it was like they'd make a loop through and, and exit. I come out behind them and like push them forward, and then I would slip back to where I was. And there was a little spot that I could crawl out of, and I had like this like kind of like um, porcelain doll kind of uh, kind of mask. It was, it was, yeah, it was mask. It was, but there's there's another term I'm looking for in there, kind of like puppeteer kind of thing. I forget the official name of it. Um, like you actually had to put it on. Yes, yeah, so I had a mask and like a whole costume and stuff. But I would come out. You know, after I'd push them forward, I'd come out toward the end at like, and I would just like crawl on my hands and leave my legs limp behind me. And I would like crawl toward them, just like that's good. propped up like this. That's really making good. like weird noises. And dude, it was so much fun. People like some people would like oh haha and walk by, but some would like try to go backwards yeah. through the thing. Like I'm done. Dale's waited his entire great. life for this moment. It was so, so much yeah. fun. to crawl around so on much just fun. his hands and make noises. Oh, he probably absolutely. makes alone in his house all the time. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> For me, it's funny because I can watch a horror movie all day long and not be phased. Like, I can watch mm-hmm. so many horror movies and not just be like, oh, that was cool. Like, that was fun. I enjoyed it. But, like, not be scared at all. You get me in a haunted house, it's over. It's done. <laughs> I've only been to two in my life. One when I was 13. And back then, yeah. I was very much a scaredy cat. And that same night, I watched Insidious and could mm-hmm. not sleep for two weeks. Yeah, no good. But um, 
I was like, remember the whole time, like I was trying to like make jokes the whole time to like keep myself from being scared and they definitely could detect it. Yeah. And then. Oh yeah. We pray on the week. Yeah. The second time was when he was the little puppeteer <laughs> at Frightensburg. And, um, I, we have our friend Sarah, who's pretty short. I like almost bulldozed her. Yeah. I was like, get out Boom. of my way. Yeah. Like move, yeah. move, yeah. move. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I w- I'll be okay. And then I got in there. I was like, my heart started racing. I was like, okay, he I, like, was I'm not getting okay. scared. And then I was like, oh, it, part of it is kind of the fun of just like screaming yeah. so much, but like it, it does really get to me. And I'm like, I don't think I like them. I don't yeah. think I, I th- there's a part of me that does, but the other part of me is like, I get so worked up over it. And so I'm just like, I don't think they're for me. So, Leah suggested to do it on tour. And all of us were like, we're good. <laughs> no, thanks. I definitely like being in them more than I like going to them. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. yeah. It's again, it's the concept of like, yeah. here's $40 scare me, yeah. you know, not, yeah. not yeah, okay. That is true. I, I, I don't know if I'd want to pay for an expensive one, but I don't know. Well, what uh, what is like the scariest Halloween you guys have had? Like, whether it be a movie you saw or like, um, uh, the honestly the one the when one? I was thirteen, yeah, my first haunted house and seeing Insidious, Insidious. all in one night. Yeah. Like, I'm so serious. I true. If you've ever seen Insidious, there's like this part where there's like a scratching of some sort. Yeah, and oh I, yeah, I that sucks. swear the next day when I was showering i could hear the scratching and i seriously did not sleep for two weeks it was so scary um it was a fun halloween but it was scary uh me and my friends did used to play with a ouija board in high school (laughs) but they were always like it was always like funny to us but the we only did it two years in a row the second year we could not find the ouija board from the year before so we're like oh so then we went and bought another one which (laughs) that's that tracks yep it's uh, for me it was like um there was remember that whole clown craze? Oh, yeah, 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 that was a good Halloween. So I I actually saw a clown yeah. in my neighborhood. Yeah, there, yeah, it was you, like standing in a field. That's crazy. Near my, my house and just drove by it or whatever, came back, it wasn't there. But that was just seeing that, like yeah. I was, will say that was that was one of the years we did the Ouija board, and so we would like go trick-or-treating uh in high school, and we all agreed we're like if y'all, if we see a clown, it's every man for himself. Yeah. We are all booking it. We're running. But I will say that same year, it, that I, I loved my high school Halloweens because I would always have a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. And then um, for trick or treating, like there was one time that we like took some candy corn and like we we ate it and then we're like wait y'all we literally just ate unopened candy which is like the number one rule yeah. for halloween don't do that so we all like freaked out spit it out into this person's yard and then we're like oh shoot they have cameras so we all start booking it and running mm. and then later that night there was this <laughs> there was this little like 12 year old girl who <laughs> was like in front of us to get candy and she was like started running back and she just Face planted face on the planted. concrete, and we oh. all were like, oh. but like, then trying not to bust out laughing at this little girl, like, just completely <laughs> eating it. Ugh. Oh, it I was so funny. I would have laughed so yeah. much. Yeah, those I are, those are some really great it. Halloween memories, but my scariest one was definitely when I was 13. Hmm. I think, uh, I don't know, like, paranormal activity doesn't scare me now, but when it came out, it was like a thing, like, it was yes. a kind of a, a phenomenon, right? And I remember. I watched it, I rented it from like Redbox or something, or mm-hmm. I went to whatever, uh, we had this place called Video Vibes, yeah. Vibes Video in my neighborhood. And so we brought it home, and I'll never forget, like, the scariest part of that movie was just the room noise. Yes. At the yes. end, when, like, right bef- like right after everything happens yep. at the end or whatever. Yep. And then it just literally cuts out and it's credits and it's just like room noise. And before yeah. there's any credits, it's just room noise. And my yep. dad turned it up. He just kept turning up the volume. <laughs> oh, 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 and I was like, Oh my God. Like I was so scared, dude. But, the first time I saw that movie was in quarantine. So I was staying at my parents' house and like, oh, wow. like I said, at this point, like I love horror movies. I can watch them all day long and not be scared. But for some reason I watched that movie and it got to me so much. And I don't, I, I was staying with my parents. So you think like, okay, usually I'm used to staying home alone. So like probably won't, won't affect me. Cause I know there's people there. 
I kid you not, I watched that movie and I did not sleep that night. No, like, that, I had the either. lights on the whole time. And then the next two nights, I did I did sleep, but I had the lights on. It, it's it so weird. It freaked me out because it felt so real. But now I've seen it multiple times and it doesn't freak me out. I've, I've it, it's just something it. about a movie. Like you can put all the cinematography and like music into a movie, but there's something about that like raw, like unedited, yes. no music. Yes. That's why I love me a found footage film. Right. Yeah. The first found footage film I ever saw was As Above, So Below, which is kind of quasi uh, found footage. I never, I didn't know what found footage was. Like, I not really. Uh, I hadn't found it yet. I hadn't found it. Yeah. And uh, I'd gone over to my sister and my brother-in-law's house and my sister had already gone to bed. My brother-in-law were sitting there and we'd played some like video games or whatever. And he was like, hey, you want to watch a movie? I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. And it's like midnight, 1 a.m., something like that. And so he just pulls up this movie. I've never heard of it. And I don't think he'd ever heard of it pulls up this movie and we're like all right we'll watch this and he passes out in like the first five minutes before it even turns to like found footage style he just passes out right that's so and, that's the worst and i'm just left there like in this oh. dark room this is like the first time i think i'd ever stayed at their house and i'm just like i got so engrossed in this film i'm like what in the world i've never seen anything like this before it, i didn't know what to expect i because i never heard of anything like this not not consciously that where i knew what it was anyway and uh, it freaked me out so much. I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah. And from that moment yeah. on, Dale swore that he was going to crawl at people you on bet. a floor in a haunted bet. house. I'm not going to be scared anymore. I'm going to scare sure, though, others. I've, I've yeah, heard the Paris yeah. tunnels are pretty scary. So, I oh my love, goodness. Don't do that. I the stories about that. Them. Yeah, but you can, like, they you say, only, like, yeah. if you go off the path of, like, the what the tours give you, like, you will get lost. Yeah. And probably forever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not about to go explore like the off the path stuff, but I would totally go on like the guided tours. Of yeah, those. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, is there any other Halloween esque things that we want to talk about, or like? So I many. guess it's the end of our season. End I know. Of, there's. Uh, I don't know. Wow. Did we, did we want to discuss anything else? Kinda. For twenty six minutes. So oh, if we do, it's fine. Yeah. Then we can we can cut we can, it off. We gave the people a lot of information tonight. You sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm down. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for sticking with us through season one, two, and now through season three. We are signing off, as always. Unsigning off. We are unsigning (laughs) off for just a short while. We will still be active, Mm -hmm. but this will be the last episode of the season. We will be coming back uh, in probably a couple months after the holidays are over with season four can't wait and there'll be lots of great stuff oh we're already planning a few things we've, we've sat down and talked uh, of ways uh we can bring to life this podcast for you in ways that are helpful for you and we can't wait for you to see that uh in the meantime though like we said earlier let us know what you want to hear us talk about topics artists where you would like to see us we're going to be trying to do some more live stuff in person here coming up pretty soon um, with some of those things in the work. So make sure you follow us on social media at successfully underscore unsigned to keep up with some of those places. You can go meet us out in the wild and have sightings of <laughs> Mr. Overstreet, DJ Patty G, and myself. So thank you for everything so far in season three. And happy Halloween! Yeah, happy Halloween. Halloween. Have a safe and no clown Halloween. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs>